Welcome back to Mock Draft Madness, day 17 of doing a mock draft every day until the NFL Draft on April 25th. As always, if you don't know ball and want to know ball, be sure to subscribe, leave a like, let me know in the comments your favorite, least favorite pick from this mock draft, as well as trade suggestions, player suggestions. We have two that we're going to try out today. Commanders fans, you are going to absolutely hate this one. Um, so first off, what we're going to do is we are going to give the Commanders... The 11th and 23rd pick and the first round pick next year from the Vikings to move up all the way to two. I also think they're going to have to include a third this year. And then, you know, this is a lot, guys, to move up this much. So maybe they have to give up a player. I don't necessarily know who you'd give up. I, I don't want to give them, you know, Addison. I don't think they'd do that. Let's just say, you know, let's do another pick this year. So 129. Obviously, the compensation is not accurate. But, you know, this is probably what it would be around. It might be even more, honestly. So we're going to start the draft here. So we're going to force this trade through. And it kind of sucks um, for the Bears as well, who have the number one pick. And then their division rival is getting, you know, a top quarterback in the draft. But we're going to go Caleb Williams here. Now, with the Vikings on the clock, I don't think um, this is actually going to happen. I don't think Washington is going to move. And the more and more I hear, I don't think New England is going to move either. So I don't think any of the top three teams are going to move. I think if the Vikings are going to want to trade up, they're probably going to get the Cardinals or the Chargers to move. Uh, maybe the Titans. But my thing is, I think if you want JJ, because I don't think the Vikings are going to be able to get May. Um you have to get in front of the Giants because the Giants are truly a wild card where I could definitely see them taking a um, a quarterback. I can see them taking JJ. So with number two on the board, we're going to take Drake May, and then it's going to be Jaden Daniels here to the Patriots. But here's what I will say. I've been hearing other things regarding the idea that JJ McCarthy may go in front of Jaden Daniels, obviously it's all smokescreen season and we don't know what's actually going to happen, but it is very possible. So there was another trade here. Um, you know, so what I'm going to do is I am going to have the New York giants come up and take JJ here. So we are going to trade up because there are teams like the Broncos and and even the commanders maybe wanted to come back up. I doubt it. But this is such a small jump that it's not going to take much. And you're able to secure your guy. So, And this allows the Cardinals to still get one of the top receivers in the draft. So um, we're going to do that. And then it is probably going to take like their second this year to move up that high. Um, because they are only moving, you know, and maybe even a third or fourth. Let's do a fourth round pick. Um, and then we're going to force this trade through. So now the Giants are on the clock and they are going to take J.J. McCarthy. So we got quarterbacks going one, two, three, and four. This leaves Marvin Harrison Jr. available to the Chargers. And guys, I don't know if I'm fully convinced that Arizona is going to stay at four. I think there is a team that could win them in a trade. I think it's going to be a quarterback trade, probably Minnesota. But. If Minnesota truly wants to get into the top five, it is going to be the Cardinals or it is going to be the Chargers. I feel like if it gets to a point where it is the Chargers, it is a lot easier for the, the Giants to move up one spot and the Cardinals to secure exactly who they want. So the Giants, or the Vikings are going to have to give up quite a bit. So now with the Cardinals on the clock, they are going to go Malik Neighbors. So at seven, we have the Tennessee Titans. Joe Alt is the easy pick here. At number eight, we have the Atlanta Falcons. So, I think they are probably going to go edge here. I think that's the most, um, the shit that makes the most sense. So, I am going to go um, Dallas Turner. He is definitely probably going to be the first edge off the board. At nine, Chicago Bears, got Romo Dunze. Pretty simple pick here. And now... I would not be surprised if the if there's a wide receiver here, I would not be surprised if the Jets were able to um, 
were able to trade up or not trade up. If if any of the top three wide receivers here, I would not be surprised if they took one of those guys over like an O lineman. So what I'm gonna do is they also don't have any second round picks. So I wonder if there's a team sitting here that maybe wants to come up for Bowers. So what I might do, or not even Bowers, maybe even um, you know, the Bengals or the Rams might want to come up. The Rams could take one of the interior defensive linemen. I think that's a very real possibility. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is I am going to trade back with the Los Angeles Rams. I'm going to have them give up their second and maybe even I think this is a it's a long way up. So maybe we give them, they give us 99 and we give them 111. So we're going to force that trade through. Rams are on the clock at 10 and they are going to take Byron Murphy. Got to replace Aaron Donald. At number 11, we have the Washington Commanders are now on the clock. So they don't have their quarterback. They now have four first round picks in the next two years. They have two seconds a second and a third next year. So they have a ton of draft capital to build their roster. And you could use that to trade up in a quarterback class next year. And that's not very good. Or you could possibly get somebody in the second this year if you don't love your quarterbacks. I think they're taking May, but let's just try out this scenario. I have not had the commanders trade back yet. So now with the commanders on the clock, they do need tackle. And we're sitting here easily with some of the best tackles still on the board i think olu fashionu would be a good addition for them he's a good pass protector needs help in the run game but fuaga is also a good right tackle it depends on what you're looking for i'm gonna look at um the commander's depth chart real quick because i'm blanking i believe they have a right tackle um but i am blanking at the moment let's see let's see internet's been slow the last couple days guys they have andrew wiley and Braden daniels yeah no so it doesn't really matter i am going to go with a talisa fuaga that makes a lot of sense for them dominant right tackle dominant in the run game can play pass very well now we're sitting here with the denver broncos um and we have a good selection of players on the board so, you could go corner here. You could go quarterback as well. Um, but I'm trying to think of a team that would want to move up and they can grab a second round pick. We're doing a trade heavy mock today, guys. Um, so, maybe what we'll do is we're going to trade back with the Bengals. who are going to give us their second pick. Second round pick. We're going to force that trade through. And now we are going to have them taking Brock Bowers. So the top 10 or top 12 is looking very, very different than what it did when the draft started. Obviously, I don't think this is how the draft is going to play out, guys. But just a little fun moving around. Day 17 to the mock. We got like 38 more to go. And we have the Las Vegas Raiders on the clock. So they really have their pick of, you know, any of the corners. Um, so I'm going to give them Quinion Mitchell. I'm always between Quinion Mitchell and Terran Arnold. I like Terran Arnold a little bit more, um, personally. I think either would be very good picks for them. So I am going to go, you know, you could also go like with a JC Latham for a right tackle. I know they need one, but I think corner is kind of a bigger need. I think they're bringing somebody in though. I can't remember. I think they're bringing someone in. Um, to possibly sign. I can't remember his name, though. Terran Arnold, Raiders. 14. We just saw them sign Chase Young. So I think it would be better to almost go with a left tackle. So I'm going to go Olu Fashanu. At 15, we have the Indianapolis Colts. Now, I heard an interesting thing about the Colts. They are very, very high on Xavier Worthy. Do I think Xavier Worthy comes at 15? No, I do not. I think that would be ridiculously high for him. Um, and they do need wide receiver help still. 
I think Brian Thomas Jr. might be a better addition, but I think they think because of the arm that Anthony Richardson has and pairing him with a with a receiver like um, Worthy can be a dangerous threat. So what I'm thinking we can do is we can have them trade back with the Eagles. <laughs> Lots of trades, guys. Trade back with the Eagles. Let's give them 53. Let's swap that. We're going to force that through. Now the Eagles are on the clock. They're going to take Cooper to Gene. Okay. So now we have the Seattle Seahawks on the board. They could use center. Um, they could use edge. And we have Jared Verse right here. And that is a perfect fit for the Seahawks. At number 18, Quinion Mitchell to Jacksonville Jaguars. Now we have the Broncos on the board. Okay. They move back. They grabbed a second round pick. Now here's the thing. Do you want to take a guy here? Do you want to take your quarterback here? Or do you want to take him in the second round? My thing is you can probably get him at 49 in the second round because who is really going to be needing a quarterback? It's going to be the Raiders and the Broncos, really. So, and even the Commanders. I don't know if the Commanders would do that, but because they have so much ammunition to go get the quarterback they want in these next couple years. But if you look at, you know, where we're at. The Broncos could probably wait for Bo Nix and or Michael Penix, whoever that's going to be. So they could probably take kind of their choice of what they would want here. Um, Leatu Atu would not be a bad pick for them. We have uh, Fautanu who could play um, you know, any parts of the interior. Or you can get a dedicated uh, center in a Jackson Powers Johnson. They do need wide receiver as well, and I think Brian Thomas Jr. could be a play for them. Um, but what... I don't know. This one's kind of tough, guys, because they really do need a quarterback, but it's like Bo Nix is going to be that guy in the second round. So maybe what we do is I'm going to have Jackson Powers Johnson go to the Broncos because you know Sean Payton loves his line. At number 19, we have the Jets on the board, and they were able to pick up a second and a third round pick from the um, Los Angeles Rams who moved up. And they do still need tackle, in my opinion. But an addition that would be great for them would be a Brian Thomas Jr. I know they're heavy in the receiver market right now. And this would be a really cool pairing with Garrett Wilson. And at 21, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers. So they do need a wide receiver. They do need a center. Um, I kind of am trying to figure out what we want to do here with them because, you know, they do need, I believe, a right tackle. And I think J.C. Latham can be that guy for them or Amarius Mims. I don't know. It depends what you want. Let's pair Amarius Mims with Project Jones. We have both of the Georgia Bulldogs in Pittsburgh. At number 21, we have the Miami Dolphins. They need a defensive interior player. Let's go Jerzon Newton to replace Christian Wilkins. Now, with the 22nd pick, let's give Xavier Worthy to the Indianapolis Colts. Pair him with Anthony Richardson. Let him go. Let A. Rich bomb the ball down there. I know this is high for him, very high for him. I'm going off just a report that I saw, and I thought it would be a cool way to get Xavier Worthy to a team that is not the Buffalo Bills or the Kansas City Chiefs. So now, with our second pick in the first round, we took a, we took a tackle, and now we're on the board again. So Talisa Fuaga is a right tackle, and you can go get... Leatu Latu and replace some of the edge rushers that you lost. I know you didn't love Chase Young's medicals um, and his effort, but Latu outside of the medicals is probably the best edge, most polished edge in the class. So you could go with Latu if the medicals don't scare you. And leaving the draft with Latu and Fuaga would be amazing. Amazing. So you could do that. I also could see them going like a J.C. Latham or Tyler Guyton. Uh, the issue is Latham, I believe, is a right tackle. But I think adding an edge rusher and kind of building those trenches would be a great thing for the Washington Commanders. At number 24, we have the Dallas Cowboys. Now, they do need a left tackle. You could go Tyler Guyton. You could go 
Um, you know, Zach Frazier to place the center. Fautanu on the board, though, is too much value. A guy that can play tackle for you and play really any of the interior positions. At number 25, we have the Green Bay Packers. They do need, um, if DeGene was on the board here, that would be a really good pick for them. Um, and, you know, pairing Tyler Newman with Xavier McKinney would be really, really nice. Um, you do need Oh, line help. Graham Barton would be nice. I know they don't typically draft guys in the first round, um, but I think Graham Barton would be a great addition. Cornerback would be nice. I'm trying to think of a guy that could also play safety for you, but with Newbin off the... Well, Newbin's not off the board. I think Newbin is just kind of the easiest pick here. At number 26, we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on the clock. So... They need kind of a lot of everything. I know we, I've been going Zach Frazier to kind of replace, um, you know, Jensen who has retired. But I also think maybe with Val, you can go Nate Wiggins. I don't know if Todd Bowles will love Wiggins, but he is like a very athletic corner. He's just kind of small. So let's let's throw him there with the Buccaneers. I've had him fall. Um, kind of to be my last like first round corner. I could also see him falling into the early second. It's just he's super talented and athletic, but the frame does scare me, especially with what we saw with Emmanuel Forbes getting bullied last year. At number twenty seven, we have the Arizona Cardinals. They took Malik Neighbors. So if you want to pair JC Latham with Paris Johnson Jr., you can put Paris Johnson on the left side. Um and then you have your bookend tackles for the next, I know I always say this, for the next 10 years. But in reality, that's what you want, guys. Like That's the type of line that you want. You want cohesiveness and guys that are good for a long time uh, to protect your quarterback. You could also go interior here with a Zach Frazier. Or you could double up on receiver even. I don't think that's a bad route to go. Um, so I am going to go J.C. Latham. I think that makes the most sense. Actually, that was cap. That was just cap on my part because they just signed Jonah Williams. So wow, that was bad. Let's uh, let's let's forget about that one, okay? So <laughs> we have J.C. Latham on the clock. Um, J.C. Latham to the Cardinals. That was a bad pick. So I think I'm gonna redo that. I'm gonna redo the mock real quick. Um, <laughs> so we are not doing that. All right, guys, we are back with the corrected mock so you guys don't need a tackle right now and you could definitely add more uh to your cornerback room so i am just going to give you guys kool-aid mckinstry at number 28 we have the buffalo bills um you know adding defensive interior would be nice and you know i don't necessarily think tavandre sweat tavandre sweat is one of the most interesting uh guys for me and the Raiders are now signing Alexander Madison um, just because it's like I could really see him go early second even though he's not um, you know pushed up that high on this board um, but also I think you know Adonai Mitchell just makes a lot of sense for the Buffalo Bills who need a wide receiver at number 29 we have the Detroit Lions they need interior help they also need cornerback help so I am going to have them taking Zach Frazier at number 30, we have the Baltimore Ravens. Okay, so they definitely do need O-line, and I think Graham Barton would be a great addition for them. They basically have Ronnie Staley and Tyler Linderbaum. Um, Linderbaum. And then 31, we have the San Francisco 49ers. So we got TJ Tampa on the board for the corner room, and we have J.C. Latham. So J.C. Latham would actually be a really good replacement for McKivitz. At number 32, we have the Kansas City Chiefs, probably the one of the most interesting, um, you know, teams on the board. Tyler Guyton is good, but he's a little bit of a project. And if you want to go tackle, Jordan Morgan is probably your next best option. So here we go, guys. This is the corrected mock draft, day 17 of Mock Draft Madness. Uh, let me know in the comments your favorite, least favorite pick from this mock draft. Uh, if you don't know ball, want to know ball, be sure to subscribe. And thank you guys so much. We appreciate it. Leave a like. I think I forgot that part. Have a great rest of your night.